Well, thanks for joining us again today on our wonderful Day in the Lord broadcast. We're finishing out the year of 2021 by by looking at some implications of the Incarnation. What specifically does the New Testament tell us concerning why Jesus Christ came in human form? And so we found yesterday one of the reasons was to explain God. Uh, by coming to this earth in this in uh, as a man, uh, the Lord lived among us and he revealed to us uh, the nature of God, the person of God in ways that even the Old Testament wasn't able to do uh, and nature is not able to do. It's a full picture as much as we can possibly handle in this lifetime of who God is. And so we see that in Christ. Now there's a second implication of the incarnation, and that is he came to defeat the devil. If you have your Bibles, we're going to look at Hebrews today, chapter 2 and verses 14 and 15. Let me read verse 14. It says, Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise also partook of the same, that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. And so he, he tells us here that uh, Christ took on human form. Uh, he, he shared in the flesh and blood of humanity. And he became also, uh, he himself also, likewise also partook of the same. Why? That through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Uh, the, the devil has a has apparently the power of death. Somehow God has allowed that to happen because of sin and because he is the God of this age. Uh, he has power in relationship to death. And Christ has come to render him powerless. One of the great truths about the coming of Jesus Christ is he's come to set us free. Uh, You'll know the truth, he is said in the Gospel of John, and the truth will set you free. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Uh, and so we find that, that Christ comes to set us free. What Free from what? Well, a number of things. He's, he's come to set us free from the bondage of sin, so that sin need not uh, eternally condemn us, and that we might ultimately be with him. He's come to set us free from, from Satan, Satan who is the God of this age, uh, the prince of the power of the air. The, uh, he is our father, according to other scriptures, uh, until we come to the true father, Jesus, uh, and, and Jesus, through Jesus Christ. And then he comes to set us free from death. Uh, death is uh, awaiting all of us. And as a result of that, uh, we live in a perpetual uncertainty that often leads to fear. Uh, it, it says in verse 15, and might free those who through fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. Now we try to, to get around that and we try to you know, maybe to minimize that, but the fact is we all know we're going to die and, uh, and everybody knows that there is a future after death. We just don't know what it is. And so people try to minimize the, uh, the implications of being dead by saying, well, we cease to exist or we return back to some kind of eternal universal fireball or, or, uh, uh, something else, or maybe we all just get to go to heaven and we have paradise no matter how we've lived. And yet we know that uh, there's no certainty of any of those kinds of things. The only certainty we have of the future after death is found in the revealed revelation of God in the scriptures. And what we find in, in the book of Hebrews, for example, in chapter 9, verse 27, is that we are all are appointed to die and after that comes judgment. So that means we stand before an almighty righteous God at the point of death, and that ought to send fear down our spine. So if, if we don't know what that looks like in the future, if we don't know what we truly face uh, after our death and we face God and face his judgment, that ought to uh, give us fear. And so it does in verse 15. There, there are people who, are, who live in fear of death all their lives. We fight death at every step, don't we? Even when we're old and sick and hardly can handle life, uh, most of us will fight it to the very last breath. There's a fear of death. But Christ has set us free from that by coming to be a man on this earth. And ultimately, as it says here, he goes to the cross. He dies for us that we might be free from the fear of death. So the Christian has no need to be afraid of death. It still is our enemy. First Corinthians chapter 15 tells us that we, we will fight death. It is an enemy, it's not a friend, but we don't fear death as we would have if we did not know Christ. We know when we stand before God at the judgment that we stand there in the righteousness of Jesus Christ himself and we're set free. 
from that fear. That's why Paul also says in 1 Corinthians 15, while death is our enemy, he says, oh, death, where is your sting? Uh, there is the sting of death has been taken out because of Jesus Christ has come. Had Jesus Christ not come at the incarnation and ultimately had gone to the cross to die for us, then death would still be our great enemy and we should fear death. But as believers, we no longer fear death. That stinger is gone because of Jesus Christ. And so that goes back, according to this passage, to the incarnation. We'll look at a third implication tomorrow. I trust you can join us then.